This question asks us to identify each of the following compounds as being aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. Now I'm going to show you the answers to these very quickly. If you'd like to stay tuned afterwards, I'll actually have an in-depth explanation as to why the answers are what they are. With that said, here are the answers. And as promised, if you want an explanation as to why the answers are the way they are, please stay tuned. I'll give you that right now. In order for something to be aromatic, it must meet three criteria. Number one, it must be cyclic. That is, it has to be some kind of ring. Number two, all of the atoms in the ring must be either sp2 or sp hybridized. No sp3s. Now, if there are other appendages or substituents dangling off of the ring, that is, atoms outside of the ring, we don't care about those. And three, the total number of pi electrons in the ring must equal 4n plus 2. That is called Huckel's rule. Now before we get started, I have to tell you a couple of things. If you have a compound that does not meet any of these three criteria, then it is non-aromatic. If you have a compound that does meet either one or two, but not three, then it's also non-aromatic. If you have a compound that meets both one and two, but not three, then it's anti-aromatic. And if you have a compound that meets all three criteria, and all the stars are lined up beautifully, mm, then it is aromatic. With those rules now given, let's look at each one of these compounds to determine into which category it fits. We'll begin, of course, with this one right here. Rule number one, is this molecule cyclic? That is, is it a ringed compound of some kind? And the answer is yes. Rule number two, are all the atoms either sp2 or sp hybridized in the ring? Well, that carbon atom is, and that carbon is, but these four carbon atoms are not. Remember, each of these four is a CH2. Each of these four has, has four things around it. Each of these four atoms are sp3 hybridized. So this compound does meet criterion one, but not two, which means it is non-aromatic. Now we'll move to this compound. Is this compound cyclic? No. Are all the atoms in it either sp2 or sp? Well, yeah, every single carbon atom in that molecule is sp2. So, it does not meet criterion one, but it does meet two. So what does that mean? It means that it is also non-aromatic. Let's look at this molecule right here. Keep in mind that I've failed to draw the lone pairs on this oxygen, so I'll fix that error right now. Is this molecule cyclic? That is, does it meet criterion one? Yes, it is, and does. Are all of the atoms sp2 or sp hybridized? Well, these four carbon atoms are. But what about that oxygen? Well, it's got a bond to a carbon to the right, to a carbon to the left, and it has a lone pair up top and a lone pair down bottom. So there are four things around that oxygen. So you might be tempted to think it's sp3. I have to tell you though, atoms with lone pairs, such as this oxygen, are flexible. That is, when they're in a ring and becoming sp2 hybridized will allow that ring to become aromatic, those atoms will actually rehybridize. That is, this oxygen will place one of its uh, lone pairs perpendicular to the ring so that that single lone pair can participate in the aromaticity while the other uh, lone pair gets thrust out of the ring. In other words, that oxygen will rehybridize to become sp2. Hopefully that makes sense. I guess the bottom line is this. Lone pairs are flexible, okay? So while normally an oxygen with four things around it like that would be sp3 hybridized, it's now in a ring where becoming sp2 hybridized gives it the advantage of being able to make that ring aromatic and hence more stable. Will it do so? Yes. Which means that this oxygen is actually sp2 hybridized. So this molecule cyclic, sp2 hybridized, now all we have to do is count all of the pi electrons. When you're counting pi electrons, you have to remember this. 
Double bonds that are in a ring and triple bonds that are in a ring only count as two pi electrons. Now I realize that triple bonds contain four pi electrons. However, only two of those can contribute to aromaticity if the triple bond is in a ring. And triple bonds in a ring are generally pretty unstable and not very common anyway. You have to have a pretty large ring size, but that's beside the point. One of those sets of pi electrons in a triple bond will be perpendicular to the ring while the other one will be parallel to the ring. Hence a triple bond only contributes two pi electrons into a ring. Hopefully that makes sense. Double bonds do the same. So double bond here contributes two pi electrons. Double bond over here contributes two pi electrons. When the oxygen rehybridizes to become sp2, it can only thrust in one of its lone pairs into the, uh, into the aromatic system, which means that you don't count both of those lone pairs. You only count one of them. So I've got two, four, six. Is 6 a solution to the equation 4n plus 2? Now remember, n can be any integer, either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Can I put in an integer for n and solve that equation? Yes, I can. If I put in 1 for n, 4 times 1 plus 2 equals 6, which means that this molecule fits all three criteria, so it is aromatic. Let's look at this compound right here. There is a set of lone pairs on that nitrogen. Is the molecule cyclic? Yes. Are all the atoms in the ring sp2 or sp hybridized? Well, these carbon atoms are. The nitrogen has lone pairs, and we remember that lone pairs are flexible. So the lone pairs, or the atom bearing those lone pairs, can rehybridize to become sp2, even though normally a nitrogen that, would, that looks like that wouldn't be sp2. So it is sp2. So it meets criteria, uh, criteria 1 and 2. Now we go to criterion 3. 4n plus 2. How many pi electrons do we have around here? I've got a double bond that's 2, another double bond that's 2, and I've got one set of lone pairs right there which count as 2. 2, 4, 6. Can I solve that for an integer n? Yes, I can if I throw 1 in for n. So this molecule meets all of the criteria, which means it is aromatic. Let's take a look at this molecule. Man. Cyclooctatetraene. The way it's drawn, it kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a cat face or something. I am a cat face. Uh, okay, I've got to erase that. That's ridiculous. All right, is this molecule cyclic? Yes, it is. Are all of the atoms in it either sp2 or sp hybridized? Yes, every single carbon atom there is. How about 4n plus 2? Let's count all of my pi electrons. I've got two here, two here, two here, and two here. That equals eight. Can I solve? that equation using any integer n. Remember, we can't use fractions or anything to solve that. Uh, no, I can't. There's no integer I can throw in there and have that come out to be 8, which means this molecule meets criteria 1 and 2, but not 3. So what is it? It's anti-aromatic. Now we'll go to this one. Is it cyclic? Yes. Are all of the atoms in the ring sp2 or sp hybridized? Well, this carbon is, this carbon is, this carbon is, and this carbon is. What about that carbon there? Well, that carbon has a bond to the right, a bond to the left, and a bond to hydrogen, and it's got a positive charge. It's a carbyl cation, which means it has an empty orbital. We don't count empty orbitals when we're counting hybridization. It only has three things around it. So it is sp2. So yes, all of the atoms in that ring are sp2. Let's count pi electrons. I've got a double bond here. That's two. A double bond to the left. That's two. <gasps> Now, a positive charge on a carbon, that counts as zero. So I've got two plus two is four. Four n plus two equals four. Can I solve that equation for an integer n? The answer is no. So this molecule meets criteria one and two, but not three, which means what? It is also anti-aromatic. Let's look at this molecule here. Is it cyclic? Yes. Are all the atoms in an sp2 or sp hybridized? Well, all of these carbon atoms are. This carbon atom has a, a negative charge, which means that it has a lone pair on it. Remember, atoms bearing lone pairs are flexible. So this guy will rehybridize to thrust that lone pair up perpendicular to the ring and place the uh, two electrons in that lone pair into the aromatic system. It is indeed sp2 hybridized. Let's count up our uh, pi electrons and see if it meets the 4n plus 2 rule. I've got... Uh, Two pi electrons over here on this double bond, two on that one. And then I've got a set of lone pairs. Lone pairs is two electrons. So I've got two, four, six. Can I solve uh, that equation for an integer n? Yes, I can. So this molecule meets all three criteria, which means that it is aromatic. 
Let's go over here to this molecule. Is it cyclic? Yes. Are all of the atoms in the ring either sp2 or sp hybridized? That one is, that one is, that one is, and that one is. That is a CH2 up top. Now that's, that's a carbon bonded to four things. None of them are lone pairs, which means that it can't rehybridize. It doesn't have that flexibility. It is sp3 hybridized. This molecule meets criterion one, not criterion two, which means that it is non-aromatic. Hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of this. Is this molecule cyclic? Yes. Are all of the atoms in the ring sp2 or sp hybridized? Yes, they are. Does it meet the 4n plus 2 rule? Well, I've got a double bond here. That counts as two. A double bond there counts as uh, another two. Can I solve that equation for an integer n? The answer is no. So this molecule meets criteria 1 and 2, but not 3. So it is anti-aromatic. Let's look at this molecule. Is it a ring or cyclic? Yes, it is. Are all of the atoms sp2 or sp hybridized? The answer is no. You'll notice that this carbon right there has two hydrogens attached to it. They're not drawn, but they're implied. So it's bonded to one, two, and then two hydrogens. It's bonded to four things. It is sp3. So this molecule meets criterion one, but not two, which means it is non-aromatic. Look at this molecule down here. Is it cyclic? Yes. Are all the atoms in it sp2 or sp hybridized? No. That carbon right there has two hydrogens on it. That is sp3. So it meets criterion one, not two, which means it is non-aromatic. How about this molecule? Cyclic? Yes. Everybody sp2 or sp uh, hybridized? Yes, they all are, because that carbon has a set of lone pairs on it, a negative charge, so it can rehybridize. Now, let's count up our total amount of uh, pi electrons. I got a double bond on the bottom, which counts for two. I've got a set of lone pairs, or, or one lone pair here on this carbon, which counts as another two. That's two plus two is four. Can I solve this equation? 4n plus 2 equals 4 for an integer n. The answer is no. So this molecule meets criteria 1 and 2, but not 3. So it is anti-aromatic. Now look at this one. This is kind of cool. It's actually a bicyclic molecule. Can bicyclic molecules be aromatic? Absolutely they can. Let's look at that thing. Are all of the atoms uh, sp2 or sp hybridized. Well, I've got carbon there, 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 and there. They're all sp2 hybridized. That nitrogen has lone pairs. Remember, lone pairs are flexible and they're the atoms that they're attached to. So that guy can rehybridize to become sp2. So the answer is yes. This guy meets criteria one and two. Let's count up our total number of pi electrons. I've got a double bond here, a double bond there, a double bond there, a double bond there. That's two, four, six, eight. Now I've got a set of lone pairs. That's another two electrons. You add all of those together, it's 10. Can I solve for this equation 4n plus 2 equals 10? Turns out that I can. If I put a 2 in for n, that will solve that equation. So this molecule meets all three criteria, which means that it is aromatic. Let's look at this one. Is this molecule cyclic or bicyclic? Indeed it is. Are all the atoms in it either sp2 or sp hybridized? Yeah, all of these carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized. Let's count up our total number of electrons. I got a double bond there, double bond there, double double bond there and double bond there. That's eight total electrons. Can I solve for this equation setting it equal to eight? The answer is no, which means this molecule meets criteria one and two, but not three. So it is anti-aromatic. Let's look at this molecule down here. I love this thing. This is a cyclohep, heptatriene. That's really, really cool. Okay. Anyway, is the molecule cyclic? Yes. Are all the atoms in an sp2 or sp hybridized? The answer is no. That carbon atom right there is bonded to two hydrogens, that is sp3, and there's nothing you can do about it, which means that this molecule meets criterion one, but not two, so it is non-aromatic. Over here, we'll look at this molecule. Is it cyclic? Yes. Is everything in it sp2 or sp hybridized? Yes. This carbon atom has a positive charge on it. It is bonded to one hydrogen that's not drawn. It's bonded to a thing up here, a thing to the left, and one hydrogen, that is sp2. Remember, carbocations don't count as any pi electrons. They're zero pi electrons. I've got two pi electrons here, two pi electrons there, two pi electrons there. That's all I've got. Can I solve the 4n plus 2 equation, setting that equal to 6? The answer is yes, I can. So that meets all three criteria, which means it is aromatic. Now we'll go to our last example. Whew, is this cyclic? Yeah, it is. It's a bicyclic molecule. Totally cool. Uh, are all the atoms in it sp2 or sp hybridized? Yes, all of these carbon atoms are. Let's count up our total number of pi of electrons. I've got a double bond there, double bond there, double bond there, and double bond there, two, four, six, eight. Can I solve the equation four n plus two equals eight? I cannot, 
which means that that molecule meets criteria one and two, but not three, so he is anti-aromatic. Now, I realize there might be some purists out there looking at that thing and saying, well, maybe this ring is aromatic and then these electrons just stay out of it and don't fiddle or mess with that ring at all. And I, you know, I just don't see how these, these two pi electrons are gonna stay out of that. I think uh, it's just gonna cause a mess. So that, I would call that anti-aromatic. If, however, you have a professor who says otherwise, you're welcome to have him or her email me. That is the answer for those. Hopefully that was enjoyable for you. I know I had a wonderful time, so uh, let's move on to the next set of questions.